Hey all, what's up my little coders? Let me show you in this tutorial how to solve the elite book question number 9. Palindrome number. Basically, you just need to return a boolean which says if an input integer is a palindrome or not. And for those of you who forgot, an integer is a palindrome when it reads the same backward as forward. Okay, in this case we return true because we have the number which is equal to 121. If we read like 121 from right to left, it still will be like 121, so numbers are the same, we return true in this case. If you have the same number but it's negative, we need to return false, because all the negative numbers are not palindromes. From left to right you have like minus 121, but from right to left you have 121 minus, so they're not the same, and yeah, this number is not a palindrome. If you have a trailing zero, then you need to return false as well, Obviously, because if you read like 10 from right to left, it will be like 0, 1. Not the same as like 10. You return false. And again here, negative number, you return false. This is basically what we need to do, guys. Let me just quickly write the code, and I will go through it with you in a few seconds. Just stay with me. Okay, dokie, guys. So, what do we have here? First of all, before we even start to do some calculations, let's think about the base case. So, in which case we can return an answer straight away? First of all, if a number is the negative number, if x is less than 0, okay, it's definitely, it can be a palindrome that we return false straight away. Or, if x mod 10 is equal to 0, and at the same time x is not equal to 0, let me actually put it like inside the brackets to make it a bit more clear. In this case, okay, it can be a palindrome because this is number which is not equal to zero, but it has a trailing zero, so it's definitely not a palindrome. We else return false straight away in this case. After that, what do we have here? First of all, how the majority of the people would solve this question? Probably a lot of the people would take the an input number, right? And would reverse the whole input number and in the end will compare if the reversed integer is equal to the original integer. And if they're equal, it means it's, it's a palindrome. If they're not equal, it's not a palindrome. It's a good solution, by the way. Yeah. Um, I don't see any problems with that solution. It's quite efficient. However, it can be optimized a bit because there's actually no point to reverse the whole integer. You can just reverse half of it. Let's say if you would have like, I don't know, 1,221. And if you look at that, okay, you take the first half is equal to 12. And if you reverse the second half, it's equal to 12 as well. So 12 is equal to 12. Okay, seems that this algorithm works, right? And it works indeed because this is basically how the palindromes work. If you take the first half and reverse the second one, and if they're the same, it means, okay, cool, it's definitely a palindrome, because that's the rule of the palindrome. That's why we don't reverse the whole integer. Let me just show you what we actually have here. We create an, a variable r, right? Initially, it's equal to zero. After that, we will go inside the while loop and while x is greater than r, we will do some operations here. Imagine that like our x is equal to 1221. Okay, we will go inside this value because x is greater than r. Yes, it works. Then we will update our r value. We will say that r is equal to r multiplied by 10 plus x mod 10. So this is like equal to zero plus x mod 10, we basically will take the last digit from the x value, 0 plus 1, r is equal to 1 right now, right? Then we will update the x value as well, we will say that x is equal to x divided by 10. We will take the last digit out from the x, and after that x will be equal to 122. Okay, cool, next iteration of the while loop, r is equal to r multiplied by 10, so 1 multiplied by 10 is equal to 10, plus x mod 10, x is equal to 122, so we take the last digit from 122, 10 plus 2, r is equal to 12. Okay, we update the x value, x divided by 10, 122 divided by 10, x is equal to 12. So right now, r is equal to 12, and x is equal to 12. That's why we'll go outside this while loop, because 12 is not greater than 12. And here we have a return statement, if r is equal to x, okay, this condition applies, in this case, we definitely will return true, because we know that this number is a palindrome. However, you also might be confused a bit about another condition. So if r is equal to x, or if r divided by 10 is equal to x, what it means? Okay, basically, if, the, if an input integer has an odd amount of digits, if it would be like not 1,221, but if x would be equal to 121, 
in this case, if x is equal to 121, we'll go inside this file loop, we update our r value, 0 multiplied by 10 is 0, plus x mod 10, so we take the last one, r is equal to 1, basically, we update the x value, x divided by 10, x is equal to 12, cool. Next iteration of the while loop, r is equal to 1 multiplied by 10, so 10 plus x mod 10, r is equal to 12. But then we update our x value, and x is equal to 12 divided by 10, which is equal to 1. We will go outside this while loop, and x will be equal to 1, and r will be equal to 12, right? In this case, even if like 121 is definitely a palindrome, but this condition will not apply, so we will need to check if r divided by 10 is equal to x. And indeed, like 12 divided by 10, so it's equal to 1. 1 is equal to x because x is also equal to 1. Basically, because an input integer in this case has like an odd amount of digits, we don't really care about the middle element at all. As long as like, you know, the left side from the middle element is equal to the right side, which is reversed. If they're equal, it means it's, it's a palindrome. So this is like another rule of the palindromes. If it's not a palindrome, in this case, these two conditions would both basically return false to us. This is how it works, guys. Okay, let me run the code now. Cool, it works. Let me submit. Perfect, guys. Almost 100%. I hope it was clear. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please, guys, give it a like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Good luck.